So, thanks for coming out. Um, it's, you could be watching TV at home, but instead we'll do it here. Um, so let's see. Oh, sorry. Flip those. Uh, we do have more prizes tonight. Um, if you look in the back, um, a company called Jimu Labs, um, they create a product called Mirror, which if you're doing Android development and you're not using it, you're missing out. Um, it will save you hours and hours of time. So we have a coupon code for 30% off everything. Um, they have also given us two free personal or commercial licenses. Uh, we'll wrap one of those off at the end. Um, so location, food, and drinks is a product robot. Uh, GM Labs is the door prizes. Uh, we've also got other stuff up here too. Um, we've got all kinds of stuff to give away tonight. If you need to find us, um, you can go to Cincy Android on Meetup, which you all did because you all are RSVP. Uh, we're on Google Plus. You can get that through gdgcincy.com. Uh, Twitter, same thing. And then if, if you're on Slack, there's a Cincinnati texting a Slack group, and there's an Android channel that most of us hang out in. So um, we've got a lot of good upcoming presentations. Um, Greg Williams tonight talking about Android TV. Uh, next month, we've got Michael Clark. Uh, he works at Kroger right now, but he's also doing a lot of Android security stuff at NKU. Um, the month after that, we've got Alex Argo, who has a very successful uh, application mm -hmm. on the iOS and Android stores, uh, talking about app monetization and app networks. So basically, how can you create a living off of doing this? Um, later in the summer, we're going to probably do a lightning talks and kind of show and tell. It's kind of a more informal group. So. If you have a five or 10 minute talk that you want to do about something really cool, um, and you don't want to commit to like doing an hour talk, uh, get in touch. You know, I'd love to have you up here, you know, kind of sharing what you know. Uh, in September, um, Adam Tennis is going to be talking about Android content transitions. So something big and new with all the material design stuff. So you know, how do you make your apps really fluid and cool looking? Um, and then in October, we've got Eric Roth talking about how do you do Android accessibility. So making your app more usable to people who have a hard time. So uh, that one I'm really looking forward to. Looking forward to them all, but that one especially. Uh, after this, we'll probably go down to Fox and Hound, uh, have a few beers, drink, uh, talk, uh, make fun of Apple. Sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just right down the road. Um, this is a kind of a sad month. Uh, Bill Moat has been doing this for the last four years. Um, you're going to South Carolina in 19 days? 19 days. Okay. I'll um, be a resident in 19 days. Yep. Yeah. So he's leaving us. Um, he's done an <clears throat> incredibly fantastic job helping grow the community for the last few years. And, um, so definitely appreciate everything you've done. So, <laughs> this group wouldn't be what it is without them. So, thank you. Yeah. Take all of us. Um, if you're hiring, uh, Get in touch afterwards. Um, I know we're hiring a senior iOS developer, so if you have those skills, uh, definitely get in touch. Um, do you have markers on your whiteboard? We do. If you're hiring, because many of the people might work with other people in the room, just write down your contact and go up on the whiteboard. And then anybody that wants it can take it down and, yep. and get in touch with you. Um, so now, let's. Okay, we'll talk about Android TV. Um, after we we'll have a quick discussion, uh, we'll do a quick demo of Mirror, uh, give out our door prices, and then head down to Fox and Hell. So, uh, Greg Williams. Thank you, Petra. Uh, maybe I could start here. Okay. Uh, thanks, Patrick. Thanks uh, again to Atomic Robot for the space and the food. Um, I'm Greg Williams, and we're going to talk about Android TV a little bit. Um, 
So first, real quick about me. Um, I'm an independent uh, Android developer. Um, I've been doing Android for about five years, a little more. Uh, started out just uh, developing uh, an app on the side, and I got a friend of mine who decided he wanted to um, pay for it, so I thought that was a great idea, and then I got started. And then I uh, went to uh, work for Kroger um, as a consultant um, through, through Patrick and, and Alex. Uh, you can get a hold of me at uh, Greg at Lime Robot Software um, and um, on Twitter um, at G underscore Willie. So tonight's agenda, um, basically we're going to talk about um, how to convert your game to Android TV. Um, there, Android TV is a really big subject and when I uh, talked to Patrick about doing this, um, I looked into you know what I could do in like a short period of time like this, and so I decided that uh, I would just focus on converting an existing game to Android TV because uh, there's quite a lot to it. Um, so, uh, so we'll talk about that, and then uh, there's going to be a little bit of a code demo because uh, I couldn't do one of these presentations without a code demo. Everybody wants to see code. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about best practices. Um, and uh, how to deploy, um, how to, how to uh, test and deploy your uh, app on Android TV. Um, and then um, if we still have time, I have, um, I have a working demo that we can, we can show on the actual Android TV device that uh, or, uh, Atomic Robot has provided. And uh, we'll do the questions and if you have any final thoughts, uh, we'll do that. Um, as I'm talking, uh, go ahead and if you guys uh, have questions, uh, someone once said that uh, the best time to ask questions is uh, when you think about them. So uh, if you have questions, just you know, raise your hand or just pick up or whatever. Um, that, that'll be fine. Oops, sorry. So um, let's talk about a little bit about the requirements. Um, so Andrew. Android TV uh, came out last year. They debuted it last year at, at Google I/O, and um, at that time, Android was in the L preview. So um, when it first came out, um, or at least when the um, when the uh, ADT, the developer uh, uh, device, came out, uh, it was uh, with running uh, Android L preview. Uh, now it's it's up to Android 5.0.2, um, and so uh, you're your requirements for developing on um, Android TV are your SDK. Uh, uh, it says this is from uh, Google's, um, you know, uh, uh, Android development, uh, 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 developer.android.com. It says 24 by uh, 0.0.0 or greater. And actually, um, that just came out recently. And I'm, I'm using tools that are a little bit older than that, and it seems to work for fine. So. But that is the requirement that they list. Um, you do have to have an SDK uh, 21 or higher, uh, again, because 21 is Android 5.0. And the toolkit um, or the uh, device is an, it's an Android 5.0. Um, and then you want to say your application target uh, also to be 21. Uh, and you can do that in your uh, Gradle um, uh, build, or your build.gradle or your, uh, your Android manifest. <clears throat> so, how do you start doing this? There's, so basically, there's a lot of um, housekeeping stuff that you will need to do uh, to set up your project. Uh, you can create a new, you can actually just go in and create a new Android um, a TV project, but uh, for, the, for the point of this talk, um, this is taking an existing project um, where you have an existing game uh, that's running um, on a, a, either a tablet or a phone. Um, and converting it to an um, to a, an Android TV. So um, we're gonna we're gonna assume that you have an existing app, and this is what you need to do to bring it up to um, be able to run on uh, Android TV. So the first thing you're gonna want to do um, is j just like you have a main activity um, in your Android uh, your standard Android project, you need to have um, a TV main activity. Now this can be the same activity, 
um, or it can be a completely different activity. And so what you're going to do is you're going to decorate your activity with this intent filter here. Um, you'll, you'll probably recognize the action, uh, Android intent action main, that's standard that you see for, um, uh, that you'll see on your main activity. Uh, but the category is different. Um, it's now a category of uh, leanback launcher. So um, that uh, these two, um, so adding this in, um, this declaration or declaration on your uh, activity, whatever activity you want, um, is, is going to be the entry point into your Android TV app. Um, let's see. That's something else. Um, yeah. Um, so, and, and without without this uh, decoration, uh, the intent filter, then you um, your um, app will not show up in the TV or in the TV UI. Uh, like I said, it can be the same, or it can be something uh, be a completely different um, activity. Uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, declare lean back support. Uh, Leanback support is also required um, for your app to display in the Android TV. Um, and uh, so um, you, you can create uh, your, your application can be just, if you're creating a, a, um, a Android TV app, you can create a, just, a, just an Android TV app. But uh, if you, you can also um, make it so that the same app can run on both Android TV and uh, your touch device. So um, if that's <laughs> what you're going to do, and that's what, what, we're, gonna, what we're doing here, um, you want to set the uh, required to false for your uh, for user, your, your user's feature um, software lean pack. So you want that to be false. Um, it, um, the next thing you're going to do is you need to declare uh, touch screen not, uh, is not required. Um, again, if you are just creating an um, Android TV app, um, you, won't need, you won't even need touch screen. But um, if you're creating a hybrid app, um, and by hybrid I mean you know, a, a phone or, or tablet app, <clears throat> As well as an Android TV app, and uh, you need to turn set that to false. Um, also, any other uh, hardware interfaces that, that you um, might have in your app. So, like uh, you know, I don't know if you can see that with the table there, but uh, you know, camera, Bluetooth. If you use any of those hardware features, then you need to set them to be uh, uh, not required because. Um, Obviously, TV does not have Bluetooth, uh, NFC, GPS, microphone, sensor, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the next thing you're going to do uh, is declare a home screen banner. Uh, what is a home screen banner? Uh, so that's um, so like when your app is in the um, on an Android device, you have your little launch icon in the uh, uh, the launcher window. Um, it has an icon. It's usually a little square icon, and it comes in different resolutions. And then there's um, and your, the name that if your app goes underneath that. Well, in um, Android TV, you don't have that. Uh, instead, you have this uh, home screen banner. Um, the image size is 320 by 80 pixels, um, and um, it goes in the uh, drawables uh, X HDPI. Um, resource folder. Um, one of the things that you're going to want, um, since this is the launcher and there's no name underneath, you need your uh, image needs to have, it should, it should represent your game, <clears throat> but it should also have the name of your game in it. Because this is basically how people are going to recognize your app. This is going to be the actual, the image, the launcher icon for, for your app. Um, and so if, also if you deploy for um, if your app is deployed on multiple languages, you're going to need a new, you're going to need a, a screen banner for every single language of your support. Um, um, 
and this is this is basically how you declare it. Uh, in your um, Android manifest, uh, in the application section, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you're now going to there's a new feature, a uh, new uh, property called banner, and you just give the uh, uh, the drawable um, link to the banner in your project. Um, pretty easy. Um, and so if you're if your Android TV app is a game, and in uh, for this presentation it is, uh, you also have to specify that it's a game. You so set is a game true. It also it goes right there in the in the application section. Uh, basically, what this does is this tells Google Play and Android TV that it's a game and it should be set um, it should be listed in the game section of the app. Uh, without that. Um, you, you know, it would, it'll just be listed in, as an application on, on Android TV, and it won't be listed in the game section. Uh, so, part of um, so the part of Android TV um, is uh, the, the lean back um, feature. And Google um, has a new uh, look and feel for Android TVs. Uh, and it's called lean back, and um, for the, in order um, to help you out, uh, Google has created a new uh, lean back library and it provides a lot of uh, UI widgets. Uh, <coughs> these, uh, this library is mostly useful for um, if you're just making a standard Android uh, TV application. But um, I didn't use it for this. Uh, basically, I had an existing game. So uh, if you have an existing game and uh, you may not use it, um, the, uh, the lean back library is built on the new recycler view library. Um, so if you, you know anything about the recycler view library, uh, it's kind of it's got some really cool stuff in it. Um, there's also a card view library, um, and all of these libraries um, provide uh, or require uh, the version four support library, the latest version. Also, there is a, a really good uh, video. Uh, by Google's anchor uh, Cotwell, um, and he talks about how to use that. Um, I didn't want to go into that uh, for this uh, particular talk, um, mostly because I'm not using it for the game. But also, um, there is an awful lot of features, and I really uh, recommend that you check it out. Um, I can, uh, I think, I'm, uh, I think I included the YouTube link in my uh, links at the end. So uh, definitely check it out. It's a dev bite. Um, from Google, it's really it's a really good, uh, easy, nice uh, video to watch. So, um, so uh, Android TVs don't have uh, touch interfaces. So, um, how do you interact with uh, Android TV? Well, it, uh, the Android TV comes with a little remote. Are, and some of them have a gamepad. So what you want to do, um, you, so, and they don't support touch at all. So um, what you're going to be doing um, is that you're going to be converting all of your menus and all of your uh, interaction to be using the gamepad or the D-pad. It's called a, the little uh, disc right here. It's called a D-pad. Uh, there's also a D-pad on the gamepad. Not to get confused. But uh, so. Um, so that um, what you want to do for the for um, you know, for your game is you're going to um, add the uh, hardware uh, uses feature, um, you know the gamepad, you know, uh, and, and again you just declare it in your Android manifest. And I'm going to like show once I get done with uh, all this intro, um, I'm going to like hop into the code and and we can take a look at uh, where all this stuff is defined. Uh, so I'm sure some people are um, really familiar with all this, uh, but uh, there's some, there might be some people who, you know, it's like, what are you talking about? Where does this use this feature stuff go? So I'll, I'll hop into that. Um, but the the game controller um, implementation uh, basically uh, uses um, the um, motion events. Uh, and the key events from um, your own generic motion event and your own key down and on key up uh, callbacks uh, from in your view or your uh, activity. Um, 
Um, so, um, the next slide has a. Oh, okay. So, and this is this is what a game pad looks like. You have a. This is this is the little game pad here, and you can see that um, you have uh, two joysticks and a D-pad on there, and then a bunch of buttons. And then on the top of the device, there's uh, uh, two shoulder buttons and two fire buttons. So there's quite a bit, quite a bit of, uh, of buttons and joysticks that you can use for your games. Um, and uh, you can use, like I said, uh, you use the, uh, uh, the motion events and the key events from this um, game pad. And you can create a very, a very uh, um, rich uh, user interface. So, um, okay. The other thing I wanted to mention too was that um, if you go out to developer.android.com, um, they actually have some good training lessons out there for implementing the controllers. And that's where a lot of uh, some of my code, or a decent amount of my code came from. Um, I can actually pull that up. I wanted to. So this is the um, so th this is the the page from uh, from their website. As you can see, um, th there's quite a bit of information about uh, the the game pad. Do you want to read that, or do you want me to make the font a little bigger? Just hit the command uh, plus. Um, so so there's um, as you can see uh, all the buttons. That I basically stole this image from uh, for the slide, but uh, so you, you can see that there's a whole bunch of um, you know buttons, and you can access them access them through. Uh, um, there's all kinds of information here about how to get uh, controllers for multiple controllers. Uh, so you can there's code out there for verifying a controller is connected, uh, recording a controller's ID, so that you can have multiple controllers and assign them to different players. Um, obviously, processing uh, gamepad button input and D-pad input, um, also joystick movements, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I didn't put implement all of this stuff in here. Um, in my sample app, I basically um, there's a few things that you can also do to uh, determine whether your app is in um, if you, if the running app is a TV app or if it's just a regular uh, you know uh, Android Touch app. Um, and so there's a, I did a couple of demos of the code to show you how to do that. And um, I also um, you know, maps some of the keys um, to the various features of the game so that you can actually, we can actually play the game. Command zero will put you back before you go on. Command zero? Yeah. All right. Um, but the, the, like, the, so let's see, there was other stuff, a lot of interesting stuff on here. Um, We'll talk about this a little bit more in uh, the best practices, but you, so you you want to follow your uh, you know the the standard conventions for your game buttons and that sort of thing. Um, so let's um, so now is probably a good time to take a look at the code. So let me let me pull that up. Um, are, you gonna, are you showing the version that cheats? Or you, no. Did you okay, so. I, I know, uh, Bill, you're expecting to see boxing, uh, but boxing was a, is a pretty complicated game, and um, I, wanted, I really wanted something that um, would be easy uh, you know, to, to get working completely, uh, to do for a demo. Uh, plus, um, so I, there's this little app that um, a guy from uh, either He's a, he was a college student from either Clemson or Duke, I can't remember, something like that, some ACC school. Uh, so he, he put this um, little tutorial out there, um, and it's a really nice tutorial. I made the interns uh, do the tutorial. I did the tutorial myself. Um, and it talks about game loops, and it talks about how to handle input, and, and you know how to do edge uh, uh, collision detection and uh, all that. So um, 
I still had that app that I wrote as part of the uh, the um, uh, tutorial, and so I thought, well, you know, that that's a really easy app. Plus, when I'm done, um, I can I can open source it because you know I, I don't want to open source Boxing, but uh, I will open source I can open source that. Uh, right now it's on uh, Bitbucket, but I'll either fork it and put it on GitHub, and you guys can like do whatever you want with it, or um, Either that, or I'll just uh, make my bit bucket. Probably gonna probably gonna fork it and put it out on uh, on GitHub, so that'll be cool. Um, okay, so let's see where's my things here. Uh, so the first thing we were talking about, and I need to make this font bigger. Do you guys remember how to do this? New presentation mode. Okay. Under view, under view, and then presentation mode. <coughs> Okay, so the first thing, um, actually, let me get out of that. You can get to the like command one to get to the different files, or command E will open recents. Yeah, I don't have uh, anything open because it all closed. So let me open up. So, um, and I'll go back to presentation mode. Um, whoops. Is there a hot key for presentation mode? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. And you said control what? Command E will give you like the little file, the recent picker. Okay. And command one will give you like the full, and all your other search keys work. So you can do the you okay. command yeah. shift over. Command all right, over. cool. So, uh, so this is um, this is my app uh, build Gradle. Um, obviously, you can see um, uh, we have um, we're compiling with, with version 21, which is Android 5.0. And um, I just have a minimum version of 12, which is like Android 3.0 or 3.1. I can't remember, but uh, basically there were some features in um, in the uh, it made it a lot easier to um, actually. Uh, handle the the, uh, the joystick and or the the gamepad stuff. Uh, if I if I use version 12 and didn't have to support, and I know like Bill definitely uh, he, he only supports Android 4 and up. So uh, these days these days. So yeah, uh, you know seriously, if you're still using two three, get a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, so. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing uh, build version 21, and uh, we have the target set to 21. And this could easily be 22, um, but you know, uh, 21 is fine. Uh, so it just needs to be 21 or higher uh, for Android TV. Um, so is there a reason you picked 12 and didn't just jump to 14? Because um, they're one of the. Um, yeah, I guess I could have just picked 14. Um, I but guess point. Oh, one percent or right. something on, on three. Twelve was the minimum that I needed for that sure. API that I was using, so I just I put twelve in. Yeah, right. On. Yeah, so that's as good a reason as any. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Three. So what was it? Control E. Wait a for Command E. Command E. Yeah. Oh, control on this guy. All right. So, so you start typing and should find stuff. If it doesn't, you do like the Command Alt O. Whoops. That's I don't even know what that did. Let's go back to this for a second. Command one, we'll pop that out for you. Command, well, again, I don't do command because I'm on Linux, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are, aren't you? Okay, my bad. I thought that was a Mac. Yeah. It looks like a Mac. I don't even know what that did. Let's go back to. Sorry. That's all right. What the hell? I don't even know what it was. Let me I'm in the present day from all the time. It's fast. You need a Mac. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I'm new to 
not really new, but um, the Android Studio, so this will do it today. Okay, so uh, so we we were talking also about um, the so what what you have to do in your this is this is my uh, Android manifest and the new features in order to use the new features of um, Android TV. Um, you're going to need to uh, set the touch screen re required to false, uh, and you're also going to um, need to use the uh, the new feature of uh, so uh, Android software lean back. And since I this is, this is a um, you know both a um, Android uh, phone slash tablet app and an Android TV, I, I set it to false, um, and then again um, added in my my uh, gamepad hardware support. Uh, it's not required because obviously on an Android phone you're not going to want to take the time to pair one of these guys with your phone. Mm -hmm. um, and again, so you're going to, in order to make it show up in your in the uh, Android TV section as a game, you're going to put, um, you're going to add this is game true and then the banner. Um, you want to uh, include your banner in here too. Um, also, um, what I was talking about earlier, um, you can, uh, I only have one, this is a game, and this game only has one activity. Uh, and uh, so the, the, my launch activity is the same for, uh, it, on the touch device as it is on Android TV. So all I did, um, I still have the, uh, the action main, and then um, I have two categories. One is the launcher for uh, my touch device. And the other is the lean back launcher, which uh, is for the Android TV. Alrighty. And then. So, so the same just, shortcut you just use yeah. to work in this. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so the next thing I wanted to show you um, is this gamepad uh, file. So, what I did is there's um, Google has a gamepad. Um, is this the right one? Yeah. So, so Google has a um, out on that that um, website that I pointed to you uh, before. Uh, there is um, they actually have some code out here, and, and um, <coughs> basically uh, I took their code and, and uh, enhanced it uh, in order to work for GamePad. Because basically in their code they're only supporting the D-pad. The D-pad is just this little portion right here on your remote and the Google Ford directional up here on the gamepad. So there's a whole bunch of other buttons. There's joysticks and all that stuff that uh, you want to support. And it you support it uh, through two ways, um, through um, a generic motion event or uh, through a key event. So basically what we have is this, the, um, I have this gamepad class uh, that takes an input event uh, that's the base class of, uh, of motion events and event uh, the key event. And we handle um, you know, basically all the buttons, like there's the x-axis hat, x-y, and uh, your, your, your axis. Um, so the way it works is there's um, your um, left and right uh, and up and down on the joystick are your axes. And um, so it's like I think right is um, positive one. So full full deflection to the right is positive one, and full deflection to the left is minus one, and similar for up and down. And so that um, basically you're just gonna like um, you, I'm checking to see if it's a, a motion event, and if it is, then um, you know determine which one it is. Um, otherwise, if it's a key event. Then we'll determine, um, you know, which key was pressed. So, like, you have your your D-pad left, right, up, down, center, and then also um, your buttons, uh, the little buttons up here, A, B, X, and Y. Those are actually also uh, keypad uh, events. Um, but also, those keypad events will get um, some of the keypad events can be actually uh, generated from just regular uh, you know, keys on uh, an Android device. So 
what we do is what we also have is a a check to see if um, these the input source was a D-pad or a gamepad, and if it is, then return true. So um, there's the, the so basically, let me go back to my uh, project here. Basically, the way this um, application was uh, was designed by uh, the the guy who designed the framework. Um, there's um, a whole bunch of um, framework uh, interfaces, and then there's Android implementations of them. And so what he did was he, he created an Android input file um, that uh, takes um, multi-touch, it's a multi-touch handler or a single touch handler, uh, implements this touch handler that he wrote. Um, what I did was I, I created a gamepad handler. Um, and basically what this, I, Followed his um, uh, you know the what what he was doing um, and basically he has this um, object pool of events and he creates an object pool so basically what you're doing is inside of a, a, of a, uh, a game loop um, you're gonna like go out and check you, you don't want to like go out and check your input so what you're going to be doing is every time through this every cycle, um, time through your game loop, you're going to check these uh, queues, these pools, to see if there are any uh, events, and if they are, um, you're going to react on them. Is uh, this the book that kind of built out the foundations of LibGX? Yeah, okay. actually, um, so because I do, I went through this too. As I recognize. Yeah. yeah, so what, basically um, LibGDX is a library that was, uh, it's an open source library um, and it's Android or uh, Java based uh, for uh, for games. And um, so this guy, like, the the guy who wrote LibGDX, um, he, he put out a book and this guy, like, read his book and then wrote a tutorial. And then LibGDX actually came out after the book. So um, they, they kind of use the same sort of um, you know, the style of, of you know and, and framework. It's a good uh, book. It's not very expensive. Yeah, it's easy. It's an easy read. It's easy to go through. Yeah, and, and um, I don't I didn't provide the link to that uh, in my in my notes, but I can uh, I'll, I'll, I can post that out to the. I'll find it for you. Yeah. So we'll post that out. It, it's a good, it's good. If you're interested in uh, game programming, or even if you're not interested in game programming, if you're interested in learning how game programming works, um, it's a good read. Um, so, and then, um, so basically, what I'm doing here is creating a, a game handler, and and then um, we're handling the uh, on generic motion um, and on key uh, uh, events. And sticking them, at, you know, calling the, into the checking to make sure that they're an actual gamepad device event, and if they are, then um, you know, returning that information uh, to to the game loop. Uh, so, so anyway, so that's um, basically how you uh, you um, handle that. Uh, let me open up the Android game. So this, and this is the game uh, class, the main game class here that has the game loop in it. Uh, actually, I took that back. This is uh, basically extends um, Android activity. So basically, this is the the activity uh, for my the, that runs the the main game. And uh, in here, um, here's where um, we set the. So you have to handle uh, your events either on the view or in the uh, activity or on the view and so in this case i'm handling them uh in the activity and i'm basically just passing them up to that gamepad handler class that i i had so i instantiate the gamepad handler up here inside of android input and then um then that game any events that go through there i'm, I'm just passing them up here and then on the keys it's a little different here i i want to be able to handle the back uh key um in my game, uh, so um, if it's a, the the back uh, key is pressed, then we call the back, the the screens on uh, back button pressed, and then uh, otherwise 
um, we just we let it let the uh, uh, the uh, gamepad handler um, handle any of that input. So um, let's see. Oh, and so the other this is a really interesting thing. Um, so in, a, in the game screen, uh, this is the base class for all the game screens um, in the app, in the app. And there's um, so one of the things, and we'll talk about this later, uh, coming uh, coming up next is the um, the fact that you, you want. Um, it's it's important that your your prompts and all that um, are going to be um, correct for your Android TV. So, uh, for example, you're not going to want to say uh, touch here or tap here or whatever um, because there's no touching and tapping on Android TV. Instead, you're going to want to tell them to press the A button or press the B button or um, click any any uh, controller button to continue or whatever. So, uh, what what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to be able to determine whether uh, your um, Android, whether the, the app that you're running is running on an Android TV or if it's ran, running on an Android uh, touch device. So uh, Google has, has some code, that, again, in that uh, tutorial, uh, they, they, they have some, uh, let's see, it's down here. Got some code um, basically that allows you to check that. Uh, where is it? Okay. Right. Okay. So basically, right here. Uh, so what you can do is you can um, get your context uh, server, uh, your context, and uh, check the current mode type against uh, the, the, that, and see if it's of type television. Right, so basically, I'm getting the mode manager here from the context, and getting system service, uh, mode service, and then getting the current mode type, and checking that. All right, who wants to do all that? There's an easier way. Oops. How about this one? This does the exact same thing. It's just one line of code. Uh, so what I did, um, this is thanks to IntelliJ. Uh, so we have application context get string, and I just put my strings in a string uh, prompt, or, or, or put them in, in the, the prompt strings in my strings file. And do you remember that uh, there's all these um, <coughs> uh, modifiers that you can add for uh, your your values uh, in, in Android. There's, uh, you know, portrait and uh, there's modifiers for various things. Well, one of those is the UI type. So let me show you this. Whoops. What did I do? Whoops. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So you, you can create uh, a strings file. So this, the standard strings file has tapped to return uh, for the return prompt. Uh, the television one says press A to return. And so all you got to do is create a second string file uh, in the uh, values dash television direct. Uh, it's kind of hard to like tell if it's in this particular view. Go to project. You can see it better in here. Notice now I have a values directory that has my strings. I also have a values television that has my strings. This string has uh, for television has the, the, the strings that I would use for television, and the other one has um, you know my, my standard touch screen devices. So it's a lot easier to do. Again. 
Oh, that's right. I switched projects. I never switched uh, views. Back to Gitter. Oh, weird. All right. Um, game. So again, we're just going to, um, we're just calling uh, our app tick, we're getting our application context, calling get string, and we're letting Android handle which string we, we're, um, we're going to display to the user. It's a lot easier. And the reason why, I, but um, in order to show it to you, I, I went ahead and put all this crap in here just so that I could you know, show you there's a much easier way of doing it. So, um, you threw it in. Presentation. Yeah, we have presentation running in. Thanks. So, yeah, just, just let Android handle the string that's for you. So, that, I would definitely recommend doing that. Uh, another good reason to um, um, put your strings in resource files. Okay. Uh, back to the presentation. I can't find that book to save my life, but I know I have it somewhere in my library. So, the next thing I want to talk about is um, Android best practices. And, and these are not just my best practices, these are documented by Google and the uh, developer. Um, Android or developer.android.com. Uh, so when you're you're writing you're creating a game for an Android uh, for Android TV, um, you you're going to need to um, consider two main things, uh, you know, for for developing games that, that are played on a television. One is the shared display. So you've got you know everybody's gathered around the TV, they're looking at this the screen. Um, you can't really it, so if you assume you have a, um, you know, you're in a living room with a bunch of multiplayers, multiple players, that, that works great for, say, a racing game. Uh, but if you're doing a strategy game, you know, like a card game or something like that, there's going to be area, there's going to be uh, uh, parts of the game where you don't want everybody to see. So uh, Google suggests two things, two uh, ways that, to uh, handle this. Uh, one is um, to set like a blinder, that uh, user control blinder that someone um, can uh, put over uh, their information. So basically, the default mode would be that uh, the secret uh, information was covered. And then I, I don't really know how uh, this would really work very well. I can't see um, everybody see someone saying, OK, nobody look. I'm going to look at my cards or something like that. That's I think that's. I mean, that was that was one suggestion that Google had, but I don't really think that was a, a very viable suggestion. The other suggestion would be to have um, the secret stuff uh, displayed on a companion <coughs> tablet. I think that's a much uh, better uh, idea. But the point is that you need to think about this if you're creating games for Android TV uh, or Apple TV or whatever for a big uh, television. Um, you need to handle that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing is um, landscape mode. I, don't, I know we're all used to developing for uh, you know phones uh, where you can rotate, um, or if you're an iPhone developer, you're developing for portrait only. Um, you're gonna uh, if you're developing for Android TV, you're going to be in landscape mode because you're not going to be able to rotate the TV, and even if you did, it wouldn't do anything. <laughs> so. Um, other best practices, uh, input devices. Um, so you, this is your input device. This is a standard input device that comes with the Nexus player. Uh, you can also buy an extra, you can buy the gamepad. Um, uh, I have uh, the ADT, which is the developer um, the TV. And uh, it, it, it didn't come with this. It only came with the, the, the gamepad or the game. Yeah, the gamepad. Um, so, if you're creating a device or a game that um, 
has co a complicated you know gameplay uh, input um, you're going to want to like list those you know, requirements up front you're not going to especially if you're writing a, a game that's, that's paid for, you know it's a paid game because um, if a person just buys the Android TV or the Nexus TV they only get this thing they don't actually get the game pad the game pad's an extra 40 bucks um, if they don't have that and they go and buy your game and they requires a game pad you're like well, I'm not gonna go out and spend another 40 bucks on the game pad they're gonna be a little pissed off at you and your comments are probably going to say you're uh, uh, you're gonna get comments and your uh, your your stars are gonna your rating is gonna suffer um, the other thing is use consistent button mapping. That's uh, one of the things that Google stresses um, in their um, in their document. Um, use the use the A button for uh, accepting and B button for going back. Use the back button on the, the pad. Use the um, don't use the back button for anything other than going back. Uh, use the back button appropriately. Um, uh, another thing is um, you, you also want to detect uh, your, con your controller capabilities. So let's say you write a game that has um, that uses a, a fancy controller with a, an accelerometer uh, or a gyroscope or something like that. Again, you're going to want to list that uh, up front in, in your um, your application's description that you that you're going to use that, and then you also want to um, you know detect that. So you don't want to just start up the game and then, uh, you know, your instructions say, okay, wave the device, and the guy's like waving the device, and his controller doesn't have uh, any of that in there. It's going to be feel a little funny. Um, so, again, um, detect the controller capabilities uh, and uh, all that. What question? Uh, what all controllers can Android TV use? Um, I would. I don't know for sure, but I um, the uh, um, it, 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 sh it should be able to use pretty much any standard Bluetooth controllers. I don't know for sure. Um, that's a good question I have to uh, put you out. Um, but again, Google these are these are a lot of these are Google's guidelines, and um, we uh, the. Uh, um, well, sort of train of thought. Yeah, these are Google's guidelines, so I'm assuming that, that there are other uh, controllers other than the ones that come that come with uh, Android TV. Uh, that was the biological version of cord up there. Yeah. I, I crossed this process through. Yeah. I didn't send them a hangout message. <laughs> yes. Turn the hangouts off. <laughs> um, other best practices, um, you know, handle multiple controllers. Uh, obviously, in this game, the game that I have, um, it's just one player at a time, so there's only one controller. Um, but you know, I can easily see like a racing game where you want to like race side by side. You have multiple controllers. Um, also, um, oh, uh, big thing, uh, handle, handle controller dis uh, disconnects. I actually didn't do that in my app, um, uh, but uh, there there is some sample code and it's a really pretty cool um, app out there uh, that, that Google provided. Um, it, there, you can download it. I, I if you want, we can uh, run that app at the end here. Um, it basically has code in it. It's, and it's really not that not a lot of code. We can, we can even pull it up on the screen and look at it. Basically shows how to uh, handle. Um, you know, detecting the, the controllers when they log in and getting the ID and assign them to, assigning them to multiple players. It's pretty cool. Um, oh, the big thing, um, show your controller instructions as part, of your, as part of your game. So maybe in the beginning, the first time the users play the game, you know, you want to show them the construction, or show them the instructions on how to uh, use the controller, what the buttons do. Uh, that sort of thing, um, and Google provides um, a, an Android TV gamepad template. Um, I can show it to you. Uh, this comes; you can download this from uh, the their documentation. Uh, it, it comes as a you know an Adobe Illustrator file or a PNG file, and you can um, 
when you edit it and put your fire button and all that stuff on there. So Google's helping you out here. It's a pretty easy um, you get your uh, uh, your UI guy to like write that up and stuff it in your in your uh, uh, yeah. What's up? On the joysticks, they have a clicky. Do they have like a, a push them in and get a little button? Down? Yes, uh, the center joysticks uh, they do have a center button, so you know you can press the center button. So you, you get each one of those. Um, I saw that in your code again. The X axis, the Y, and then has Z. You know, to push. The, yep. On the, the motion controller you built. Yeah. <coughs> uh, I think that was all the. Uh, it was in GamePad. Yeah. This is a, so I think that's all the best practices they had. Um, <coughs> oh yeah. So Google's been going with this uh, new. I don't know. Products you can call it process, uh, where um, you can put anything you want. Not anything, but you can you can put pretty much any. You just upload your app to the Google Play Store. And anybody can like download that to either their phone or their tablet. But they're being a little more protective um, with their new uh, platforms, uh, Android TV, Android Wear, uh, Android Auto. Um, they require you to they, they actually review your app before you can um, before they can be listed in any of those stores. So um, the uh, so in order to, to publish your uh, app to the, uh, the Android TV, you, um, you first go into your uh, developer console, and in the section under pricing and distribution, uh, I don't know if you, anybody who's a developer uh, has probably been in there, because that lists all of the uh, countries that you're willing to, uh, to distribute your app to, and, um, and whether it's a, a free app or a, a paid app. Um, there's a, there's a new section at the bottom, and it lists all of those new markets. So there's a, um, you know, the Android TV market. There's the Android uh, Wear market and uh, Android Auto. Uh, so uh, once you upload your APK to the Google Play Store, uh, the, you know, to the Google Play Console, if your app has all of the correct declarations in the in the manifest that we talked about earlier, then a little checkbox will get will become highlighted and then you can su submit it to uh, the Play Store or you can when you publish it to the Play Store it will also go to Google for review and Google has uh, for Android TV they have quite a few um, you know uh, I'm look a little forward here uh, requirements for you that you should that you need to meet and I will pull them up this is their uh, TV app quality website, um, and so it talks about uh, what what the app should look like, how they should function, um, and then they have a visual design and user interface. And there's like a whole bunch of these. Uh, these are the these are the visual design and user interfaces. So your launcher, your launcher um, displays the launcher. So some of these things um, we're, we you covered because you. You put them in your manifest or whatever. So it has a launcher icon, um, it, and it has the launcher banner. Uh, the launcher banner contains the name and probably in the correct language. Um, you know, if the, the app's a game, it has that is game flag, so it'll be in the in there, and, and, and so on and so forth. And there's a lot of stuff on la on navigate or uh, layout and and sizes. They have things, you know. Your core text size and your display size need to be those um, font sizes. Um, uh, you don't want to cut off anything. I mean, a lot of these are just you know, if you're making a quality app, they're going to be in there uh, things. But uh, I, I found it very interesting that uh, Google's going this way now. Um, and uh, um, and then there's a section on functionality. There's quite a bit of function stuff on functionality too about you know. Um, it's got to have the lean back launcher. Well, that you need to have that just to even get that little check mark in, in your uh, uh, developer console. But there's a whole bunch of the stuff. You've got to have your touch screen set to not required, obviously. Um, you know, and then your game controller has a nice feature in there. Um, they have really specific uh, stuff on advertising too, and I don't really know how. 
Um, you're supposed to meet these requirements nowadays. Um, I was looking over these, and some of them are, are pretty interesting. Like um, for advertising that uses clickable, non-full screen, non-video ads, the app does not allow ads to link to a web URL. What what uh, ad provider supports that? None that I know of. I mean, all of them, when you click on it, it basically fires open uh, your browser, right? Well, you're not allowed to do that on Android TV because there is no browser on Android TV. So um, I don't think they have everything vetted out. And hopefully, maybe in Google I.O. They'll, they'll talk about that. So I'm not really sure. And that was one of the other reasons why I decided not to do Boxing because Boxing has ads. And um, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to handle this. I so what does that test column mean in the middle? Are those tests that you can run? The, or is that, these uh, are the these the are the legend. They'll tell you what you're not passing. Yeah. So so what's <clears> going <throat> to happen is um, when when you um, uh, when you submit, it's, they're basically going to like write they'll um, they'll there's going to be a status in your um, in your console that displays a uh, with a status. It'll be something like you know submitted or whatever in review and then you know and then either rejected or accepted right uh, also they will send you an email to your developer email uh, telling you the results and I'm sure it's going to list all of these tests okay. that they whether they, the stats would pass and all that and so then you just go out to like it'll say okay you failed TVGP so you go out to here and you click on the learn how to play candle that that would be a stupid one to fail but um, you know, something like uh, the, I could see a lot of these people, a lot of people failing these advertising sections. Um, so uh, it, it's a, it's a it's a brave new world in, uh, for Android uh, TV development. I, I don't, I'm not really sure what you, what you're supposed to do uh, about that about your ads. Um, maybe not. Have you ever seen a TV app with ads? I have not. I haven't. Um, and maybe you don't eat, I don't know. Uh, I haven't, I haven't actually that. seen any. <clears throat> so maybe that's it for now. Uh, you don't have that. Uh, and, and if you look at the, um, the Android TV apps, uh, the vast majority of them are pay apps. Uh, there's a lot of pay apps. And they're typically not very expensive, $2 to $5, something like that. Um, there's a few free ones. Um, I've played a couple of free ones. Um, but those. The ones that are free are probably from the larger companies, and they're just wanting to, you know, get you sucked in. Actually, they have in-app purchases, the ones that typically the ones that are free. So you, when you when you buy the, um, you play the game, you get like five lives or five <coughs> stars, and if you're very good at it, you can continue to get lives. But if you're not, then you just have to keep buying new lives. So that's that's one of the ways that that. Uh, they probably monetize them. So, like I said, I haven't seen ads, <clears throat> and I'm not sure how you would meet these, the criteria here for these ads. Um, let's see. Back to my presentation. Here. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I was talking about the quality test. Um, yeah, your, the results will be emailed to you, um, and you, you'll, you'll have a review status in the developer console. Um, <clears throat> also, um, it, so you submit it, and it gets rejected. That doesn't affect your, um, the, the app that's in Google Play. Um, so if you have a, a dual, dual app where you, you um, you know, it's just in Google Play uh, for uh, touch devices like phones and tablets, and you all, and that that set, same app also works on uh, Android TV. If you're in, if it gets rejected from Android TV, it doesn't matter uh, for the the touch screen. It's it's still out there, still out there deployed. Um, and I guess you probably your users could probably sideload it onto their Android TV if they wanted to, but uh, you're not going to. You won't be discoverable, um, so it, it pretty much cuts you out of the market. Um, what happens if your app passes? Well, you get a made available in Android TV banner on your Google Play listing, and uh, yeah, in the little badge um, on your. Uh, so 
basically, um, if your app passes, it, it will be available in, in uh, Android TV, and you'll get a little badge uh, on your uh, your playlisting. Alrighty. Um, oh, so I guess um, what I was going to show you next uh, is the um, Android TV device. Actually, I don't. I have this. I have it with me, but. Um, uh, or uh, Tom Robot provided uh, their um, Nexus player, so we're just going to use the Nexus player. But it's very similar. Like I said, the difference is um, there's round, looks like a hockey puck, mine is square. Um, and uh, theirs comes with a little um, remote with a D pad on it. Mine, I have to use the app uh, that's in the Android Play Store uh, to, to do that, or I can just use the D pad or the game pad. So, um, real quickly, um, so what you're going to do, what you wouldn't do uh, if you want to like uh, test your app on it. So you, you finish your app, and you, or even if you don't finish your app, you're like working on your app, and you want to test it. Um, you have two options: the a test device, uh, or you have um, uh, a, a TV emulator. Um, the TV emulator, um, the Google suggests that you turn on Haxon uh, for OS X and uh, Windows or uh, KVM for Linux. I did that. It's still slow. Um, really slow. Really, really slow. So, um, Jenny Motion, maybe? I don't know if they have an Android, um, an Android TV uh, image. Maybe. What? I have to see. I have to take a look. I, I tried to uh, do a little bit of looking before uh, um, the presentation, but I didn't. on your last screen, can you do ADB over Wi-Fi? Yes, and can you so do that with phones now? Can you? I don't know. Uh, that, I, I didn't realize you could do it over Wi-Fi at all. Maybe. Um, so um, for the Android device, uh, basically you can use a debug cable. Uh, just the Nexus device has just a, uses just a standard uh, USB uh, micro USB uh, cable. Uh, the um, ADT has a special device. It's like oh, it's all crazy. It's uh, it's like a three-headed uh, monster here. You've got, um, but that's the way what you have to do for that. Um, it also support like I, like he said, it supports ADB over TCP/IP. But the latest update that Google pushed out for 5.0.2, they turned it off by default. I don't understand why. Um, you can turn it back on, um, but next time your box removes it, goes off again. So um, I was gonna—I can demonstrate this. Uh, so, uh, like I said, you can. So you just use the command adb connect. You give the IP address and the port number. Um, and by default, uh, well, it used to be the port by default used to be four three two one. Uh, now it can be anything you want because uh, you're the one that's going to turn it on. And you're going to turn it on using the command ADB TCP/IP and then a port number if you want to use. So I'll quickly uh, I'm going to switch over to the people with the Nexus. Whoops. And we'll turn this guy on. So there's an Android TV for anybody who has not ever seen one before. Um, you can use a D-pad. Oops. There you go. You can use the D-pad, or you can use the GamePad's D-pad. Um, oh, cool thing about this guy is that this guy has, actually has a microphone on it, so you can press the, the mic button and do uh, voice searches for Google. Um, I don't have that on. On my ADT, but it is on the app, the the, uh, the companion app that comes with. Comes with it. So what you would do is you go into settings and uh, in the Wi-Fi, uh, select uh, your Wi-Fi and hit the status, um, and then you can get your IP address, right? And then. 
don't disconnect from the Wi-Fi. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes. On that D-pad, you might be there for a week typing in that password. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good point. So, let's do... I'm going to switch back over to... Uh, of course... Moved everything on me. Um, so let's we'll start by just doing. Um, we're just gonna, this is the the, the Android game that I wrote. Um, so I'm just going to like start running this because I've already connected to the uh, device. I was going to build this guy. And when it comes up, you, uh, I should have two options um, because I, I'm connected both ways. I'm connected uh, via the USB cable, and then I'm also connected over Wi-Fi. So you'll see I have ne Nexus Player. One of them is this is the USB serial right here, and then this one here is my um, connection over TCP IP. So I'll just select this one real quick, and we'll load it on there. No, this is... Switch back over to the... <coughs> uh, okay. And the first time you install, you're going to have to accept or uh, decline that. And there's your game. Not even that sound. So uh, uses the A button to play. And then notice um, my code. It displays the press A to start um, on the tablet. It says press or touch anywhere to start or something like that. And you press and then. And so, there it is. Good. Up is jump, and then crouch and jump. Pretty simple game. Is that Kilobot? Is that what that was based on? Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> so, okay. Game over. Uh, and again, press A to return instead of touch anywhere to return. Did you write that song? Huh? Did you write the song? <laughs> no. The song, uh, I don't know where it came from. It came from the guy who uh, did the tutorial. So. There you go. Uh, the other, um, the other uh, game that I have uh, was the, is the... Um, the default game, there's like a sample game that you can get uh, if you go out to that tutorial uh, that Google has on doing Android TV games. I'll open that project. Uh, it's called Controller Sample. Uh, let me switch back over. This is a very small, um, a very small app. It's um, pretty impressive. Um, how small it is. Basically, it's just an acti <laughs> one activity <laughs> that has like hardly anything in there, and then a game view. Um, and let me get, put this into um, presentation mode so we can actually see this. So, um, oh, okay. So yeah. So it's just uh, this view, um, and it sets up a bunch of um, it sets up a bunch of controller. It, it, it basically, this what this um, demonstrates is if you had multiple, if you have multiple controllers, we could actually put multiple controllers and two multiple people can play on the screen. Actually, I do have another uh, device, and so if we really want to do it, we can. Um, there's also a, if, um, code in here handling the generic motion events like I did before. Um, there's also um, 
there's code in here on, um, like I said, attaching, attaching controllers and de you know detaching the controllers. And there's really a lot, not a lot of uh, code in order to, to do that. You basically, you get a uh, input manager um, from uh, input manager factory, and uh, you know, get your input IDs. And um, as they connect, uh, you're just add, you're, he's just adding them to a, a, a list. So, I think that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty simple code. I mean, there's not a lot to this. Um, and I'll show you what, what it does. I'm going to run this guy on there, too. The, okay, so this one is not, um, this guy is not a, uh, um, an Android TV app. He doesn't have all that information in it. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to run this guy on the Android TV app. There will be no entry in the on there for him, and so you can't relaunch him. The only way you can launch this guy is through ADB. So that's what we're going to do. I, and obviously I could easily go in and, and um, make all those changes so that it does that. But this is just kind of a quick easy. Um, so there it is. Uh, the controller is already connected. I should have disconnected the controller first. Uh, but basically, it just uh, allows you to move around with the joystick. Um, I, I thought maybe, I'm not sure exactly what the object of the game is. I thought it, it would handle like button pressing, but it turns out if you actually press a button, it just ends the app. That's a bug or that's not a good thing. It looks like it should be asteroids. I know, yeah. it should be. But you know, so basically, if you. Uh, Have you tried like the trigger buttons? Yeah, I tried that. But that one kills it. The regular trigger button mm -hmm. doesn't. You're supposed to imagine that you're a space cowboy, it says. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so that's that. Um, again, so that's um, <laughs> so that's again out. It's out here in this um, in this lesson. Uh, here's the sample code right here. Uh, and in this lesson, these are the objectives that they teach you. Um, verifying your controller is connected, uh, processing game button uh, and directional, or the D-pad button and the joystick movement. So it's a really good, um, quick and fairly easy, fun even, um, the exercise lesson to do if, you, if you're interested in. Uh, and this is, I don't even think this is specifically Google <coughs> TV. Uh, it is in the Google TV section. Uh, this is this link is in my uh, in, in the the, uh, the references at the end of the presentation. So um, the presentation. Um, we talked about the emulator. I can pull the emulator up for you, but it's pretty boring uh, and it's really really slow. Um, but that's it, really. Um, any other questions? Uh, While well, we have that, I have the references here. Um, the, this top one here is the the, the developer TV, and then um, uh, that, this is your quality, um, you know, uh, test that Google's going to do for you, or gonna, when you submit your um, Android game. Um, is that this is that training, uh, the controller input training that I just showed you. Uh, we also have, well, looks like I have the quality one in there twice. Looks like uh, I didn't, uh, I'm, lo I'm lacking in quality there. And then the stack, I put in this stack overflow link to this is, um, I thought I was crazy when I first uh, tried to connect to my uh, ADT. I'm like, oh, I'm entering the command and it's like saying it's not, it's not accepting it. And so I like Googled it and I came up with this. And, yeah, I don't, everybody's saying, yeah, with uh, 502, Google's turned off uh, 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 ADB over TCP by default. You have to go in and turn it on. So 
Uh, the developer options on ADT? Do what? On that device? I didn't see it. I looked. <clears throat> nothing in there about turning it on. Oh, so you have to manually turn it on. You have to manually turn it on. Um, there's a command. On my phone. Yeah, there's oh, a com gosh. there's a command right here. So yes, you have to connect with the with uh, the U USB and then type the ADB TCP in the port, and then you can disconnect. <laughs> but you're already connected. I guess the good thing is if you're like across the room or something, you can take a laptop over and turn it on, and then you can go back and like you know, go back to you know, developing or whatever. But uh, it's really inconvenient. I hope they just did this, did it uh, accidental, and it'll be back on in the next release. Um, that's what I'm hoping. Um, uh, yeah. you, do you have to give it the IP address? You're just giving it a port number. What's the IP address and the port number? So, uh, oh, in order to no, in order to turn it on, you just tell it the port number that you want it to run on. Mm -hmm. um, by the previously, the port, default uh, port for Android TV was four three two one, so that's the one I use typically. Uh, but you can put anything. Um, and then to connect, you just do ADB connect and you give it your IP address and your port number. Um, the last one, I have a link to this presentation in the presentation. So a little incep inceptional there. Looking for that on the meetup site. What? Looking for that on the meetup site for people find. Yeah, yeah, I got the Google the short. URL to it. So. Are you going to post your sample code? The channel? I will post my sample code. I'm going to go ahead and I'll, like like I said, I'll, um, I'll fork it over on GitHub and I'll send you guys the link. I'll put that out on the meetup too. Uh, any other questions? Um, a little off out of the scope, but I'm just kind of curious. Do you know how it compares to the Amazon version? Like, is it? I don't. Because I don't know okay, anything I, about I the Amazon. Read this <laughs> I don't know anything about the Amazon one. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, anything else? Um, okay. Um, yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks yep. for uh, hosting us.